This is the Television Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Sect. Episode 40, recorded January 21st, 2016. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set. This is the Television Enthusiast Podcast, or TVEnthusiast.com. Uh, you can check us out there. That's our main site. I am your host for tonight. My name is Tyson. Joining me today, as always, are Kat. Hi. And Will. Hello. So today we're going to be talking about what we've been watching in the last couple of weeks, what's coming up next week, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's going to be in the next week's podcast and what other kind of content we have coming up on uh uh, our network, so or our <laughs> our network of sites, or our site in general. Uh, so I'm going to start things off. I actually watched the Angie Tribeca Marathon, the 25-hour event, but it was actually only, I think, like 10 episodes, so it was like five hours. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say straight up, I thought the first episode was hilarious. It actually very strongly reminded me of a British comedy that's very similar called A Touch of Claw. That's from Charlie Brown who also did Black Mirror. Um, that's not available uh, stateside, I believe, still, but it's very similar in that way. It's 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 a it's a straight up spoof show, which we don't get too often. We haven't had like decent spoof television or movies in a while. Um, in the vein of like a, 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 a what's what's the movie called? Uh, the Naked Gun. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like in that way, like very ridiculous, over the top kind of spoof stuff. Um, that's kind of turned to crap in movies in recent years like we used to have like you know scary movie was pretty decent and we had a few other ones that were pretty decent and then all of a sudden out of nowhere we started getting these ones that were like really bad um that weren't even like really so much parroting something as just referencing it <laughs> yeah yeah um uh, like epic movie and all that i know yeah. it's the past two years we haven't really gotten it but There's a new one coming out, I noticed. Uh, um, the Wayne Brothers have a new one coming out uh, called Fifty Shades of Black. Oh, Jesus. So they're doing that. And that's the Wayne Brothers, and <laughs> you know they did the, the original scary movie and stuff, so I have more hopes that that could actually be entertaining and funny. But um, right, That's not the Zuckerbergs uh, who have been doing epic movie and... Uh, yeah, those horrible, horrible ones. Meet, meet the Spartans and all those yeah. horrible... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> those ones are pretty abysmal. Small. It's there. It should be better than that. But Angie Tribeca as a TV series, um, it's been even more rare in TV. Which I mean, we interest. had Spring Queens, which kind of was a little bit, but that still it wasn't so much a spoof as it no, was yeah. just it was, kind of like a really off the wall comedy. It was a yeah. Spring Queens is more of a satire. Um, yeah. No, like it's interesting you bring up Naked Gun. Though, like this is in the vein of Naked Gun because Naked Gun was a film spinoff of a spoof television series. Series called Police Squad, which yeah. is basically spoofing police procedurals, and now we got a new TV show. Do it. So it's like we've come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Angie Trebecca. I think the first episode I really laughed. I enjoyed it a little bit more after that. But the thing is, when you get into this like spoof material, like five hours straight of spoof material, it starts to wear really thin. This is not the kind of show that you want to binge watch. <laughs> So it's kind of funny that they chose this to do this weird promotion where they're binging the whole first season and then, you know, starting this next season the next day. And they did like a whole binge-a-thon thing. So like while the episodes were airing, like between like where the commercial breaks were, they'd have like this little segment hosted by Dion Cole, who's in the show, who's been a contributor on like Onan before. Um and they so they had you know the cast on there and it was kind of like interviews and talks and stuff and they did it like almost like a telethon so they had people like manning phones but it was just taking compliments from people watching live (laughs) it was kind of ridiculous and weird and and it just didn't make sense like it didn't work as as it and and it actually like i said it wore thin by the end the show itself wore thin by the end um not because the show itself was getting worse or anything or at least i don't think so like I can't put it into that context because I've only seen it by binging it. Um, but just it, it just is not the kind of show that is designed to run this way, you know? Right, right. So yeah, uh, but there are a few things that it did well or that were kind of like little running jokes that I liked throughout it. Um, one thing is that the whole title sequence was just like a guy screaming, much like uh, the beginning of the, um, what was it, uh, CSI Miami or something that does that? But the, yeah! 
you know, and the guy puts on the glasses. So it would just have this guy going, ah, something like that through the whole thing. And then it always ended, like, in a scene from the actual episode with, like, this one of the people, like, doing something that hurt them. Like, one time it was a guy, like, holding a coffee pot in his bare hands. <laughs> he was, like, walking. And our time, like, it was another guy and he slammed his hand in, like, a, a file drawer, file cabinet. <laughs> so it, it's like they kind of gave, like, this reason for that scream or something. So that was, like, a little running gag that was kind of funny. I found myself every episode going, like, okay, what's it going to be this time? Um, um, but yeah, I mean, it just, it, it's not a great way to premiere a show like this. I mean, if you're going to do a binge series, you're, you want to do something that's more story heavy, that kind of really keeps you involved, not something that's kind of like an episodic tweet. Right, yeah. It just, yeah. It just doesn't work well for that, so. Oh, no, yeah. You know, when I heard that they were doing it all in one go, like, I thought that, that they, it, I didn't realize that this first airing, all that, um, re-airing them all in one go, like, for a second go, or something. Wow, that sounds, that sounds exhausting. I don't think I... I realize binging is binge watch today, but that's still just... <laughs> yeah. It, it just it wasn't a smart idea. I, I don't know if they just couldn't make a lineup and then they realized, like, oh, we almost have our second season ready to air and we haven't aired any of these episodes. Let's just do some marathon, make it an event or something. I, I'd like to know the kind of reasoning behind why they did it because um, it's so strange and, yeah. uh, and it didn't work. You know, it just did not work. Maybe and, they wanted to try it just to be the first try it. Because Netflix has arguably some similar in their whole world release. Mm-hmm. Maybe they wanted to first with a n- non-Netflix. Yeah, that's, that's I think, could could largely be the case. I'd imagine there's probably something else going on in there. There may be some kind of a scheduling issue or maybe, you know, the network is trying to kind of change. The logo kind of changed suddenly out of nowhere and it has kind of like a hipper look to it now. Um, by say hipper it means it looks like more 90s-ish, which is kind of like the new hip. Everything is kind of going back to like this weird 90s look. <laughs> um, lots of bright blues and yellows and pinks and stuff and logos. But uh, yeah, so they're changing with that. And then during the course of the like binge where they had like the, the little segments between the episodes and stuff, they actually um, showed like commercials and had kind of the cast there for like other shows that are coming up. And so TBS is actually debuting a few kind of high concept comedy shows. One caught my attention. It has a uh, maybe from Arrested Development in it. Um, and it's from, uh, I think his name's Michael Snowweather. I can't remember exactly, but he's an, he's an actor who's in uh, um, Wet Hot American Summer and he's uh, been in the comedy groups The State and um, Stella, I think. I think it's called Stella, the group he was in with uh, some yeah. of the other people from The State. And so he's a writer, comic, comedian, you know, uh, um, actor. And he's like running the show but he doesn't seem to be in it. And it's, like I said, it's uh, the actress who plays maybe in Arrest Development is like the main star of this. And it looks like it's really weird. Like I could not gleam anything from the from what's going on. It seems to be these two groups, these two friends, these two girls that are friends, and one of their, uh, another one of their friends disappears and they're looking for, and it's like some weird comedy about that. Um, I can't really give any details out. Like I just, I didn't really understand much of what was going on and the little bit we saw. But maybe, Maybe that's part of the reason too that they did this bingeathon as like a way of like getting eyes onto their network when they're kind of doing something similar to a rebranding um, right. by getting more heavily into scripted original content. That that could be it. Um, definitely, um, it is an interesting stunt. They uh, they put the entire first season up for binge watching, and then you know two weeks after you know second season is going to premiere. Uh, that is a very unique way of introducing a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, yeah, it's different. Um, like I said, I enjoyed it. I, I'm still going to watch the second season. Um, I'm actually kind of interested in how the second season is going to progress just because, like I said, the binging kind of ruined it for me by the end, and I wonder if it's going to feel a bit fresher on the second season having it spaced out. But this is definitely a good example of how not every show is binge-friendly. Right. So, it's like binge-watching the, the shows that are binge friendly are scripted content that is heavily serialized 
realize that goes from one episode to the next. I mean, I mean, if if you got content that isn't you know serialized, it's probably not worth binging. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I think I think it's like a marketing failure on their end to where like you get you get marketers and they take these trends and they they don't know why or how these trends exist, just that they're trends, and so they try to take advantage and emulate them. And they want to capitalize on them, but they don't they understand them. Yeah, they don't necessarily understand them, and I think this is a case because I think binge-watching happened because Netflix enabled it and because there's so much material out there that is heavily serialized. Like, I think you look at a show like Lost, and Lost is a show that you would want to binge-watch because of its nature. There's, um, it's funny because when I watched Lost again, I watched it with a friend. It was while well, the show was still on. It wasn't after it had finished, but I was getting a friend caught up, and so we were watching it on Netflix, and um, binging it, like, maybe ten episodes at a time, where we'd sit down and get a bunch of snacks and just kind of hang out late into the night. Um, when we got to, like, the second season, I was kind of dreading it, because I remember the second season of Lost being, like, really kind of slow, and having certain issues with it and stuff, and same thing with, like, the first half of the third season. No issue at all when we were binging it. Like, <laughs> it was so much better binging it than it was watching it week right. to week. Right, right, right. And, yeah, so it's interesting how, like, your perception of that can change. On the other side, I remember binging... My sister was writing an article, and she did this article where she um, came up with this idea where she was going to watch 24 over the course of 24 hours. So we were just going to binge it straight through, and she didn't want to do it by herself, so she she got me to do it with her. And we watched through the entire second season from beginning to end, binged it in 24 hours, like where we just took brief breaks here and there. And, uh, yeah, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I hated watching it in, in a big grouping like that. And that is a serialized show, but I think what ruins that is the whole idea that it takes place in 24 hours. Um, it makes sense when you're watching it over weeks and weeks and weeks because it, even though the show takes place over 24 hours, like you're, you're, it's like you don't perceive it as that. You perceive it as something that takes place over a longer period of time. And when you do actually perceive it as something that literally takes place over 24 hours, it just seems really ridiculous. Right. Like, right. Um, okay, there cannot be this many plot twists happening in the course of one day. No, it does not make sense. It's like way too ridiculous. Um, and it's uh, something you just don't think about when you're watching it week to week, you know? So it wasn't a problem we had when we watched the first season or when we watched later seasons. It was something that only really occurred when we were doing this with the second season. So yeah, um, just goes, you know, to show that not binging isn't necessarily the only way to release a show. Uh, let's move on from Angie Tribeca. Let's talk about the 100. Now, Kat, I know just because I, I edited your um, your best of 2015 pick, so just by editing that and a certain spoiler that's in there, I know that you've watched at least some more of the 100. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm all caught up. I watched the... Uh... Okay, I, oh, you're ahead of me then, because I haven't watched the season premiere yet, so okay. I'm going to watch that when I head downstairs after this. <laughs> um, but okay, so you're you are all caught up. That's good. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if I want to talk about the scene that you were talking about as your as uh your your pick for saddest scene in your in your top ten list. Um, <laughs> yeah, just because will love. just because will or anybody that's listening to this might want to watch it later, and it's a pretty shocking kind of crazy scene. So let's talk about it, but in like generalities, you know. Okay, I will say possibly my favorite moment. It's heartbreaking. Uh, everything about it was just wow. And and I, I, one of the things I love about it that I'm really appreciating about the series, so like they'll constantly like put themselves into a crisis where the only way out is something really terrible. And 90% of other programming would come in with an easy fix and save the day of sex machina, minute, yeah. And we'd be really relieved because we'd go, oh, thank goodness they didn't go with that terrible thing. Whereas the hundred goes, let's let's go, let's go let's go through with this terrible thing and see what happens. And they said this over and over. And I. What I appreciate about it is it, it increases the tension for me because it means like I sincerely don't always know what happened. I say oh, I die, that terrible <laughs> things can happen. Like it, it really raises the stakes for the show, and I really appreciate that. For anybody who wasn't paying attention till just this moment, Kat is not talking about watching Game 
of Thrones. <laughs> I see prepared by some people to Game of Thrones for that reason. Yeah, definitely. Because they're willing to kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, really shocking kind of yeah choices like that. So uh, yeah, we can we can get away from that spoiler a little bit, and and you know that'll be something that that Will might be able to enjoy later on. But um, yeah, it was a it was just a great scene in general, and yeah, it de- definitely I was gonna say pretty much the same thing that you said, which is that um, it backs itself into a corner and then instead of giving itself an easy out, it, it just heads like, it just lowers its head and dives in head first, you know? Yeah, I, mean, I feel like when situations are starting to go to the characters, the show goes, how can we make this the hardest it can possibly be for them? Which is great because it means that our characters are, I, I like, it's great writing. Characters never get out of any such easel, but they, but they always find out of it. That was probably the harshest, um, like, decision in the, in the show. Um, but this season in general has been season, one of yeah. hard choices for Clark. Second season finale, arguably, had the hardest decision to show. It. <laughs> Woo! Holy cow! Like, that Clark has it in there? Wow! <laughs> so, the, the show is awesome, though. Like, it's moral ambiguity and all that. It's great stuff. Yeah, um, so, Will, are you are you getting more and more interested to watch The 100? I totally am. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up watching it, like, after this podcast, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, this is going to be the next show I, I have to pick up. Um, it takes I, a little while for it to get to the point that Kat and I are talking about. Not just the events, but I mean, like, when it first starts off, it definitely has that, like, oh, here's a bunch of young wayfish attractive teenagers on a planet by themselves, and, you know, you get a little <laughs> bit of the Lord of the Flies kind of aspects in there. That's what the trailer looked like. The trailer, yeah. looked, like, trailer looked like literally CW's Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Which well, is not a compliment. Um, but it, it, looks, it looks a little, it looks a little on, the, on the cheap side, even though there are, like, the, you know, decent Lord of the Flies kind of elements right from the beginning. It still just feels a little bit like, oh, okay, this isn't, you know, this is a little too, you know, you have these kind of unreasonable bad characters and these good characters but in this bad situation and and then it it's it takes a while for like the real conflicts to start coming to head and when that happens that's when it really shows its strength this year right yeah. so definitely give it a while you know um okay, but yeah, I, I will, it's I will, not that it's bad from the beginning it, it's not like I'm it starts say, off shit and then turns good i'm gonna say give it three episodes because there are events that happen in the third episode that i think really demonstrate what the show is. Is, is that the one I'm thinking of? The... Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it. I'm okay. Just gonna say is it the one that has to do with communication? No, no. Okay. But that's a that's a great, no. That's, a, that's probably the first one. happens in the third really episode that I think demonstrates show, so if you do, try it. Yeah, it but definitely you're going you're gonna to get some parallels to, you know, a Game of Thrones kind of thing just with its its willingness to like, yeah, do whatever to in order to serve the story. Um, right. Um, which is good. So uh, that's, what I, that's what I like the most about anything, you know. It they're if they're willing to go to you know uncomfortable, nasty places if it serves the story. That's that's what I get into. It you know because that just means that the writers have total devotion to the story that they're telling, and that devotion to fan service or pleasing fans' wishes or you know. Um, so yeah, that definitely makes me excited to hear that. So yeah, if you, if you start binging it now, you'll be caught up just in time for Hulu to pull the episodes that you need to watch Woo! to catch up. <laughs> I want never-ending cycle of never catching up to anything. <laughs> unless, unless I, that lots of people have. Unless, unless, I, uh, unless I pirate. Um, because that's Which brings us to our next, our next topic here. Companies want me to do. <laughs> our next topic here is uh, Man Seeking Woman, which uh, I had caught up on, um, and now I'm completely caught up because there is another episode since our last podcast, and I've seen that as well, but um, Will I, was ahead of me initially, and he finally caught up to the first season, but what we were just talking about with Hulu pulling stuff is exactly a problem he's having now with me. It's, it's not exactly that problem. The episodes are there. They're just locked behind a cable provider, and I can't access them. Yeah. Uh, which is stupid. Um, yeah. 
So I am caught up to as far as it's possible for me to catch up at this point in time, in which I finished the first season. Amazing. The last episode of the first season was amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I really like the conceit at the beginning where he's literally he, he's literally ex- exhausted all his dating options, and he's yeah. out in the middle of nowhere to like... It's like a cave woman or something. It's yeah. like a cave woman, yeah. And, and his friend's like, oh, Oh, if you don't, if you don't have, oh, if you don't have, if you don't have a shot with knock knock, or then, then, <laughs> then you're officially out of option. <laughs> <laughs> what I loved, what I loved about the episode was just like the idea that he goes to this convenience store, and first the one guy is all like, he finds like he's like, ooh, penis enlargement, you know, and he's like, and the guy like behind the counter is like, you know, oh, warning, you know, be careful with those, don't take too many, you know, read and start label it says that you, you'll you hurt your liver. Yeah, and then like so right next to those pills, it's like time travel pills. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> the conceit, so the conceit of the episode is he he's run out of dating options and so he, he tries to get, he tries, he uses these time travel pills to go back in time and fix what happened with him and his ex so that they don't end up breaking up. Like what happened at the beginning of the series. With increasingly dumber like reasons to go back and fix it. Because yeah. Yeah, like, three of these pills. He has three of these pills. Like the last one is uh she says something like uh like she likes fa- likes unique facial hair on men. And so he goes back in time and tells his child self to have unique facial hair. And then when he gets <laughs> it's like the dumbest thing ever because he could just from that point grow unique facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then so like he gets back to the present and he, he's married to his ex. He's one, but now humanity is enslaved by by an alien named Trakanon. <laughs> <laughs> also, he finds out that that being married to his ex-girlfriend, he finds out that he doesn't enjoy it. They they actually don't really get along very well. Um, they just don't have the same interests. Well, they do get along, but not the new him. <laughs> uh, yeah, not, not the real him. It's it's the new yeah. him that's been created yeah. by Stargirl that like he replaces. Well, it's like the idea of like. It's like the idea that he 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 had to change so much of himself, yeah, just for that to work. And it's like so he finds out that that doesn't actually work for him. Um, and then there's also this problem that humanity is enslaved by aliens, and he cannot go back in time anymore. To that <laughs> and friend is a sex slave for the alien. Oh, and they can't get divorced either because uh, the aliens are Catholic, and divorce is punishable by death. Yeah. <laughs> So he ends up, you know, taking out the alien for the sole purpose of being able to get a divorce. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was very funny. I think my favorite episode of the season, though, was I believe the, the ninth episode, the one before that. I think it was the one before that or the one before that, um, where oh. it was all like his sister's perspective. And it was the ninth episode, yeah. They did the entire episode around his sister where she where she gets dumped by her fiancé. And then it, it and then it totally flips the script and and we get an episode through her her, her perspective as she jumps right back into the dating game. Yeah. And uh, with the robot. Oh my god. I, I, <laughs> with the robot, I literally laughed out loud. And for me, I don't laugh out loud at stuff normally. Like at least not this hard. Um but yeah, I was laughing pretty hard at that. <laughs> um I was like this like yeah. Yeah, this show got me. This this show actually got me to laugh out loud and pretty hard, uh, which is incredibly difficult to do. So props to the show, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. I love I love how the robot like it seemed to be like her like settle option, and then she started becoming more and more comfortable with it. And then he had sex with her, and he was like, "Oh, I, I'm out of here." And just like basically like like every other guy she was worried about going out with, so he did the same thing there. <laughs> it's like yeah, every other guy she was worried. About. So this was her settle option, and then she warmed up, and then, and then he's like, "Orgasm achieved. Got to go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was very, it was very funny. I like, I like <laughs> that it put the script, especially you know having seen his sister from this other perspective um, throughout the whole series, and then putting her in a very low spot, and then her basically going through the exact kind of stuff that her brother is going through. Yeah, um, yeah. But like as a female, and like how that was flipped, like how like certain elements of it were flipped. Right. So uh, yeah, oh that was God. really funny. All the all the little girls at the tea party who are already married. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she spends time in this tea party with these little girls, and they're all married. <laughs> and they're all married, and they're telling her, "Oh, you know, she if, if she doesn't get married by thirty, it's all over." Yeah, <laughs> like breaking it down, like how you know, if you want at least two kids, and you want them to be at least two years apart, then you know. <laughs> so yeah, it played on those kind of like uh, um, maternal fears and stuff. So it was it was really interesting um, dynamics with. It was yeah, it was definitely really. really interesting dynamics with. I, I, I hope you get to see the, the next season in some way or another soon because the last episode was pretty hilarious this this yeah. week's episode. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'll figure it. <laughs> so yeah um, yeah so we'll move on from that and I'm going to talk briefly about uh, The Expanse which I'm continuing to watch which continues to impress um, continues to like present this you know just ever growing list of cast members Members that you don't really know, you know, of them, like who's actually really important to the story and who's going to become more important and who's going to, who's actually expendable that you don't know is expendable yet. And, um, it's just a really fascinating ensemble piece in that way, you know, like you can follow these characters for a while and think like, oh, they're really central to everything that's going on. And then like this other character that was really minor will have like this moment in which you realize like, oh, they're more deeply tied to this act and they're more important to the story than this other character that I've been following before. And, um, it just continues to be that way. It continues to be a really great science fiction show. It's interesting seeing how the show has grown in popularity too, because when I first started watching it, there was like no buzz around it at all. And then I watched the first episode and I was like so-so on the first episode. I was like, um, oh yeah, it was pretty good, but you know, I have a few complaints about certain things pacing and you know, but but it looks like it'll improve. And then as the show went on, um, I saw like more and more people start talking about it. It's like every week I'm hearing more people going like, oh, have you seen The Expanse? You know, oh, it's really good. And it's, you know, and then you get to like around the fourth episode and that's when everybody reaches that point seems to be the time when everybody just completely falls in love with the show um, with the the attack on the Martian ship which is like the real kind of like oh my god kind yeah, of moment. That's the real, like, what the, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that is definitely um, I still gotta watch the new episodes um, I'll probably get outside by watch those sometime I don't know I got I got a lot you got those that. and you got 100 yeah <laughs> I'm probably got, I'm probably gonna start have to prioritize Prioritizing what I want to discuss for the next podcast now. So I'm probably going to have to start prioritizing and say, okay, next week I want to talk about this and this and this. So that's what I'm watching this week. <laughs> next week make, I'm going to make like a, this, a written, this, uh, yeah, write, write yeah. like a thesis about your plan for each week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, that, that brings us to an end of uh, what we've been watching. Uh, we do have more that we've watched recently and more that we're going to talk about. Of course, we're talking about the shows that just came back this week. We had uh, Marvel's Agent Carter as well as The Flash and Arrow and tonight, the night we're recording this, was the premiere of Legends of Tomorrow. All of those shows fall within another show that we do on uh, YouTube called uh, TVE vs. Marvel and DC and we're going to be recording that again. We haven't done one an episode in I think over a month now but we're going to do another one of those uh, this Sunday we're going to record it and that should be up uh, next Next Monday um, on YouTube to watch. So look forward to that if you want to hear our take on the Flash, Arrow, uh, Marvel's Agent Carter, and Legends of Tomorrow. All of that goodness. Uh, so yeah, uh, pay attention for that. Now we're going to be talking about what is coming up um, next week uh, 
starting stuff that's coming up with tomorrow for me right now, already today for Will, where he is in New York, and, and for Kat, I believe, as well. Uh, but uh, starting on Friday, January 22nd, uh, Mad Dogs comes to Amazon. This is a show that um, I don't think Kat really liked it too much, but Will and I enjoyed it the first episode. It was part of the same pilot season that brought us Man in the High Castle. Uh, but this is the one that's kind of about, starts off kind of like a douchey entourage type show and then um, like takes a very really weird creepy kind of twist yeah, uh, it, by it, the end. Yeah, it, it has like this dark twist by the end that you don't see coming. Um, it happens in a really creepy way too, not just like dark but like weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's that the whole season will be out uh, this Friday. So pretty much today for you now, Will. <laughs> Mad Dogs will be out. Um, it's also the mid-season return of Grimm on NBC. Uh, next day, Saturday, January 23rd, is the return of Black Sails on Stars. That's a show you might want to check out and see if you have any interest in now that you have uh, Stars for the month, Will. Yeah. I might not, not sure you'll like it. Can't promise you'll like it, but it's worth checking out at least an episode. That's That that might be your, uh, your what you contribute next week on the podcast. Is yeah. <laughs> Actually, next week we're actually going to be talking about something else. So, next uh, week? Uh, oh, I was going to watch the 100 and talk about that next week. Next week we're actually going to be going over, I'll, I'll get to that later when we're done with this, what we're going to be doing next week. But um, yeah, that might be something for you to kind of check out. You might want to just kind of go over some of the star shows and just check like the first episodes of a few of them and see which ones you're interested in. And you could give us your stars sampler platter. <laughs> um, stars Will is, has stars now because stars is available as an add-on option to Amazon Prime as an additional thing. So that's why we'll talk about that if we get a chance. Uh, Sunday, January 24th is the return of the X file. I want to know, Kat, are you going to watch because you were pretty reluctant about this show coming back? I have absolutely no idea. Um, my sister's VRing it, so I might, she says it's good. I might watch it. If she says it's bad, I'll probably, I, I'm just, <laughs> it still just seems so practically airy. It's pressing. Cause like X files is like one of the most important shows of the night. It's yeah. like a big reason why a lot of television that exists today, it's, you know, it's huge, foundationally important, and this just feels like going to a sully and already somewhat damaged Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the initial reaction to, like, the trailers and stuff that came out for when the trailers came out for this new season of the X-Files were mostly pretty negative. It was a lot of people going like, uh, it looks like the actors are kind of phoning it in. Um, but then, I think it might have been at New York Comic Con where they debuted the first episode for people. You started getting all these very positive reactions coming from the people who had actually seen an episode. So I'm really interested in seeing kind of how people react to it coming back. And, um, you know, mostly people that are like in Kat's position of where they love the X-Files, but the X-Files went on too long. It did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it ended, you know, when past its point of when it should have ended probably. And now it's back. And does it really need to be back? So uh, it'll be interesting to see what you have to say about that if you get the chance to watch it. Um, but yeah, Will, do you have any interest in that watching the new X Files? No, I don't watch the old X Files. So. I've I've only seen some of the old X Files. Well, actually, quite a bit. But like that was from an era in which you were either taping on VCR or <laughs> you were watching it live. And I never like rewatched it after that. Or so I watched episodes here and there, but I'd miss some episodes. I saw the first movie. So I'm going to check it out, but I don't know, you know, I might be missing a few things. I bet there's like a big recap of the whole series on YouTube somewhere. I'll look, look that up and just to remind myself and, um, cause I know I missed, I think I didn't watch the last couple seasons when they went to like, what was it? Uh, um, like I almost had a completely different cast, I think for a while. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm probably going to check it out at least just, just because it's such a big event. Um, sure. mon Monday, January 25th, we have, uh, three shows coming on. First up, Lucifer. Uh, I have to say, I, I told this to Will already before, just because I was laughing so hard when it happened. I watched uh, Supernatural, this week's Supernatural tonight, and they've had the devil back on in Supernatural, and the most hilarious moment was when uh, Sam was talking to Lucifer, and uh, uh, 
uh, Lucifer was saying, like, you know, I'm I'm your only chance at beating the darkness. And then Sam said, okay, so let's say you can beat the darkness. What then? You're, you're just going to give up peacefully and not, you know, wreak havoc yourself? And he says, so he's like, well, what then? What are you going to do then? And Lucifer says, move to L.A., solve crimes, which <laughs> is basically the plot of Fox's Lucifer. <laughs> that sounds very strange. <laughs> which is about, you know, the the you know the fallen angel Lucifer uh, heads to LA, opens a bar, ends up meeting a cute female detective, has will they won't they chemistry, and starts helping her solve crimes. Oh, that sounds honestly crazy. <laughs> exactly, but uh, it was funny hearing it be referenced by Lucifer and Supernatural like that. So that that's that's probably the best thing about Lucifer the show, as far as uh, I'm concerned. Having not even seen it, is the joke they made in Supernatural. <laughs> Um, that same day is the premiere of The Magicians, which The Magicians, they put up the first episode, or they aired the first episode on Sci-Fi in December, uh, and now the first episode is available pretty much anywhere. You can watch it on YouTube, or you could watch it um, on any kind of streaming service for free, the first episode. Um, this is a move that, you know, a lot of people have been doing, particularly Sci-Fi now. They did the same thing with The Expanse, um, and USA which is Sci-Fi Sister Network did that with Mr. Robot. It's kind of like their new way of doing it, which is much better than the Angie Tribeca <laughs> method of just binging a whole season on TV, giving, you know, time for hype to build um, by releasing a first episode early. Thankfully, when this premieres on Monday, they're actually going to premiere the first two episodes. So everyone who's seen the first episode, like myself, can actually see something new as well. So I love The Magician. Uh, I liked it at first, and then the end ending of the episode just blew me away. It was amazing. Uh, really hooked me in. I just recently did a conference call with uh, the actor um, Jason Ralph, who plays the main character in the in the show, as well as uh, the showrunner Sarah Gamble, who used to be uh, used to work on Supernatural. Um, so I just did a conference call with them. That's up on the site. You can check out um, story on that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a good show. Um, Will, I know you were kind of interested in checking it out. Are you gonna check it out now? Or? Yeah, I'm gonna try. I have so much to watch. It's, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna so pile this on you. This the 100. Uh, yeah, the 100. <laughs> Get some Mad Dogs. Uh, you try Becca, you know. X Files. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I just say hold off on Angie Tribeca. That's that's it's not necessary watching. It's funny, but it's um it's something you can catch like a couple years down the line or something, and it's not gonna matter. The humor is not really timely. It's not you know it's it's not time dependent or anything. Um, but yeah, The Magicians. It's a good show. Cat, do you have any interest in it? Not really. I saw an ad for it and really. Looked- you you lean more towards the sci-fi side than the fantasy side. Um, Actually, I love both, but I prefer, I don't go for... Okay. Like, I'm more likely to try Shinari. Okay. Shinari Chronicles is good as well. Um, but yeah, that same night is the season two premiere of Angie Tribeca on TBS. <laughs> so, uh, now that season one's been binged out of the way, season two is on its way this Monday. So, we'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, Tuesday, January 26th is, uh, the debut of The Outsiders on WGN. This is WGN. WGN's kind of like weird outdoors Sons of Anarchy s show <laughs> about uh, Appalachian mountain men um, that are kind of outlaws and their dealings with like a small town nearby that is kind of civilized and has to deal with this outlaw group that kind of come riding in on ATVs and if you've seen the trailer for it it looks kind of like uh, it's a little iffy there's parts about it that look good and there's parts that look like wow they're really trying to kind of get that Sons of Anarchy outlaw you know thing going. It's almost like Sons of Anarchy meets Justified, but without the humor of Justified. Uh, I'll probably check it out, but I don't have necessarily that strong hope for it. Uh, I doubt either of you are interested at all, but you can prove me wrong if you <laughs> if you think otherwise. <laughs> so, Cat Will, do you have any interest in The Outsider? No. <laughs> um, Wednesday, January 27th is the debut of Suit on USA, and Thursday, January 28th is the debut of You 
Me and the Apocalypse on NBC. This actually looks really funny. It's got Rob Lowe in it. It's got a uh, um a uh, lot of lot of actors from both uh, the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, it's like a co it's a collaboration between the two. It's got um um God, what's her name? Uh, uh, Nick Offerman's wife is it Megan something? She's she plays she plays his second wife on Parks and Rec too. You know what I'm talking about, Kat? Oh, um, she was on Will and Grace. Yeah, Megan Mulally. Ma- Ma- yeah, she's in it as well. Rob Lowe's in it, and then a lot of British actors are in it, including one of the actors I believe from The Wrong Man which is a really funny British show on Hulu. Uh, this is kind of a comedy about the apocalypse. Uh, it already aired in the UK. Now it's airing on NBC on January 28th. And that is uh, the next week in TV of what's coming up. Uh, I'm just going to say a brief word about what we're going to be doing um, with the podcast next week, which is we've been doing our pit for the best stuff of 2015, our best of TV in 2015, where we're not just talking about shows, but but, you know, some of our favorite scenes, our favorite, you know, protagonist, our favorite antagonist, our favorite uh, uh, um, actors in in the roles, our favorite ensemble cast, all those kind of things we've been kind of doing. So I did the first one the first week of January. I, I did my pick. Uh, the second week of January, we had uh, Ed, an old contributor on the, um, the weekly set back when it used to be a, tech, uh, a text-based uh, roundtable. Um, and this last week, this week, we had Kat doing it and next week Will is going to be putting his picks up so we're going to be just kind of going over some of our picks and talking about kind of our favorite moments of TV in 2015 based on our list and what we did and just have a little fun kind of loose discussion about that not as formatted as we normally do with this stuff Uh, so that's going to be our show next week after that we're going back to our typical normal we'll have stuff to catch up on a lot of stuff will premiere by then we'll have to check in on Will in the 100 (laughs) see if he's watched it. Uh, so yeah, uh, check that out when it comes up next week. Reminder again that we also have a Mar- our TV versus Marvel and DC, a show where we talk about all of our comic book shows that are on right now that just came back. All of them came back this week in the same week. Uh, we're going to be talking about those all in a YouTube show that we do. So check that out as well. That should be up on Monday on the site. Um, and you can check our site, tventhusiast.com. All of our content's linked through that site. So even if it's on YouTube, there'll be an article for it on the site as well. You can check out our articles for our top picks of 2015. Leave comments. Let us know what you think. That's pretty much it. So thank you everybody for listening to uh, TVEnthusiast.com's official podcast, The Weekly Set. This was episode 40. Thank you for listening. Night. Night. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to theweeklyset at TVEnthusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more content.